Well, we've got all the line luck today, as we've now... Oops, sorry, I'm trying to find my monitor. I didn't know where it's gone. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and uh, the lionesses and the cubs have found the male. Now, we're not sure exactly which male this is. There he is. Good-looking boy. And he apparently took down this buffalo all by himself. Oh, listen to this. Listen to those flies. And uh, the description that, that Dave gave as we the lionesses arrived and the flies took off en masse was that um, it sounds like Connor's flying his drone. Oh, look at that, first of the cubs to arrive. Everyone's hungry. Isn't that so cool? Now the little ones are still coming in. They're quite close to the male. They might go greet him. Here we go. Hi, Dad. Oh, look at him. He's playing with them. Oh, sweet. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, oh, no. Oh, no, a child. A child. What do I do? Well, Jay is wondering how long is their how often is their turnover on the dominant male lion coalitions in the Mara? It's difficult for us to say. We haven't been here long enough, and I think that's one thing we're going to only know for sure in time. But I would say it's not as high as you would think, just because there is such a, a high density of food, and the coalition territories are not as big as they need to be in other places. But also. It seems like one coalition moves a male coalition out and then they go join another pride. So, it, oh, getting smacks. Mom's much more hungry than you. You've been topping up on milk, you little greedy gutses. Well, the female on the nose has actually got the tongue out of the buffalo. She's pulling the tongue right out of the buffalo. So if there are any sensitive viewers, we do warn, uh, this might not be for you. So what I think happened here is that male lion caught this buffalo snoozing in a mud wallow, uh, which is right next to them here, uh, just to the left of the male. There's some water, and I think that buffalo was snoozing in there and got caught unawares. The little cubs are a little bit nervous. You probably find they haven't been spent too much time around the males. And you see them there, Dave? And they're coming very, very slowly and very, very cautiously through the long grass. Deborah is wondering if the mortality rate of the cubs is, is similar from Juma to the Mara. Uh, I, I don't know yet, Deborah. I think, again, it's one of those questions we're only going to be able to answer uh, with more time spent. Uh, but I would say it's probably similar, if not maybe a little bit higher, just due to the, the amount of hyenas that are around. family altercations over the dinner table. Michelle's wondering, will the males usually share their kills with the females? Uh, yes, Michelle, especially if it's a, it's a big carcass and he's already eaten a lot, uh, he, he won't have a problem sharing with the females. Oh, little cubs heading back to go play with the male. It's always a dangerous game, but you can see the older cubs are slightly more confident. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he bit Dad on the bum! <laughs> oh, 
Ah, cheeky little thing. But you can see that they're not that hungry. Um, they're, they're very full on 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 meat, on meat or milk or a combination of. Oh, next cub to bite dad on the bum. <laughs> Naughty little ones. And we can hear what I've dubbed the soundtrack of the Masai Mara in the background. <whistles> which is a Rufus Nate Lark. Now obviously that hyena we saw wandering around has smelt this carcass, but it was only a single hyena, so maybe hasn't called in enough backup to think about challenging uh, a big male lion and the lionesses on this carcass. Now the little guys are slowly, slowly coming closer and closer, but they are still a little bit nervous. Shame, little guys. It'll be okay. Now, if you notice on the shoulder of that buffalo, there's a lot of white stuff. Do you see that, Dave? Mm. Do you know what that is, Dave? Oh. Not a, no idea. Mm -hmm. Those are fly eggs. Oh, and uh, by the looks of things, yeah, they're eggs. Most of them. They haven't managed to manifest into maggots just yet, have they? Are there some maggots in there? We can have a closer look. Dave's going to give us a closer look. No, it's still just eggs, but I'm sure there's maggots inside. Oh, on the ground. Where they, see how they've moved? There we go. There is a, a writhing sea of maggots. Uh, Tina's wondering how old is this kill? As far as I know, it's, it's only a day and a bit old. Um, and it, it doesn't take long for maggots to arrive, um, the flies to arrive, and also there's a, there's a lot more flies here than 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 you, we're used to down in the Greater Kruger. Remember, this is coming to you 100% live um, from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And if you've got any questions, like Tina just had, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. Look at that incredible power, how they're moving that carcass around. Well, we're going to wait here. I'm, I'm definitely can't wait for those little ones to get up enough courage uh, to come and join the rest of uh, the females and the cubs on the carcass. Oh, males up. And where are the little cubs? They've disappeared into the long grass. He might be just going, I've got to get away from these boisterous youngsters that keep nipping me on my behind. Might be just going to go find some shade to have a schnooze in or have a drink. Now, I'm just going to have a quick look to see if the cubs now notice the males a bit further away, the little guys, and decide to come in. Mm, not yet. They're watching where the male went. Oh, well, okay, we're going to stay here, see what else happens, see how this plays out. While we do that, let's send you all the way back to Ali in South Africa.